Uh, we've got this news this is quite good news i have to be honest right because i'm i have to be completely honest i've been a bit frustrated and annoyed about this kind of back and forth and the fact that it wasn't coming to an end and people having debates and arguments online and the designer himself seemingly appearing to be somewhat unaware of how he's coming across or how idiotic the whole entire thing is it just was a shit show from everybody that was involved in it right but this news is courtesy of nice kicks which i think is really really good and it says as follows it says nike and john geiger reached settlement in trademark infringement lawsuit as you guys would know um john geiger makes these essentially you know he's kind of flip or rip of a nike Air force one silhouette and he does them in these really cool interesting colors and materials and whatnot and he's been kind of doing this for a very very long time i think the reason why i'm familiar with john geiger if i'm not mistaken were from those air force ones that everyone was wearing for a while ago i forgot the name of them but he essentially took an air force one high and stitched loads of different swooshes on them do you remember there was like different swooshes i think they're like four or something on the side and i thought those looked pretty sick so i'm kind of familiar with what he does in general but you know he's been kind of famous as well for doing these um shoes the gf ones that he's been kind of pushing out there but essentially you know it's just an air force one kind of updated with his kind of logo on the side um maybe different proportion different materials but essentially it's the same sort of silhouette and in that Nike decided enough was enough. They didn't like him copying um, what they were doing and profiting off of it, so they decided to sue. And then John Geiger responded with a counterclaim, I think, where he was essentially arguing for the right to copy, um, which was absolutely bizarre. And I think on social media, he was kind of, you know, flipping out and going crazy, which makes a lot of sense now, considering he was going up against Nike, multi-billion dollar company. He essentially, his whole entire livelihood and the future of his family was basically on the line because if they, if they would have, you know, took it to the nth degree and got awarded a crazy settlement, that could have, that could basically bankrupt it into a point where he could never make anything again so maybe his flip outs online made a lot of sense but me personally um even though i'm not a fan of nike even though i'm not a fan of customizers sneaker customizers in general i feel like the creativity in the sneaker customizing scene is at an all-time low most of these guys have no creativity no imagination whatsoever they just repeat and regurgitate the same things again and again and again essentially they they are as culpable as nike are for putting out retros continually they don't really make any new interest in silhouettes they just take the same old shoes everyone's wearing nowadays like jordans and update them with a you know the same old tired um sneaker flipping customizer updates like pie iPhone leather and snake skin and all this sort of garbage stuff that no one wants and then kind of overprice them to the point where it doesn't really make any sense where you're paying like a thousand pound for something that's being quote unquote handmade it's absolute bullshit I would much prefer those guys to use their talents and their skills of craftsmanship to actually develop and you know make their own actual shoes from the ground up why not especially nowadays in this market I feel like the appetite for people to wear something that's in that's kind of new and unique and you can't really get in a lot of places is there and people are willing to spend the money um why not make something new and interesting in terms of a shape why just take the same old thing that nike are putting out there and just kind of do your spin on it and then charge more for it, it just doesn't make any sense for me personally so i never really liked it so but then in a weird way i also like what he does the other things right he does like these weird bathrobes he has these slippers he puts out i actually like that stuff because i think it kind of matches his brand a little bit more that kind of luxurious sort of um rich sneakerhead sort of vibe thing i think he would do really well and he's kept on designing those sort of things or maybe just creating his own silhouette so i didn't really understand why somebody who's clearly got a creative bone in his body clearly somebody has passionate about shoes would be fighting for the right to copy when he could be spending all that time creativity and resources focusing on actually making something new and fresh but hey i'm not him so maybe there's more to the story but anyway this story and this conclusion is definitely something that brings a smile to my face because hopefully this means john geiger will go and focus on making some cool and interesting things instead of trying to leech off the back of what nike have done and fighting for the right to copy because i think that's absolutely redacted but anyway, the article says as follows it's not every day that nike goes from engaging in a year-long battle to acknowledging that they respect the very person they filed a suit against while giving their well wishes for the continuation of that person's business it's been over a year since nike admitted this lawsuit against la la land production designing to include notable designer john geiger accusing him of trademark infringement and brand confusion with the rising popularity of his sneaker model the gf01 on august the 30th nike issued the following statement announcing the parties had officially reached a final sentiment and the case was closed so all of that abuse that they were putting him under the spotlight pressuring him lawyer fees court fees whatever it may be they've nike decided you know what 
we're not bothered anymore. Let's call it, let's call it quits, shake hands and go our separate ways. Pretty sick. But the statement says, reads as follows. Nike and John Geiger have resolved the lawsuit related to the Nike Air Force One trade dress and John Geiger's footwear product, specifically his GF1 shoes. The lawsuit has been resolved through an amicable resolution that includes a consent judgment. As part of this resolution, John Geiger has agreed to modify the design of his GF1 so he's still able to make them, which is an incredible result. Nike respects John Geiger as a designer and other designers like him and both parties are pleased to resolve the dispute in a way that allows John Geiger to continue building his brand while also respecting Nike's intellectual property rights of its iconic Air Force One trade dress. Now on Nike's end, it did look a bit nuts, right? To come after such a small, relatively small person in comparison to them, somebody that is intrinsically a part of the sneaker culture, a sneaker scene out there in the US and, um, and essentially go to war with sneaker customizers all over the world, right? Because this basically will set a precedent that they don't want you to do all these things again because essentially they could come after everybody that's doing those shoes that they designed on flipping Alibaba and Tabo and shit, right? The ones that way they replace the swoosh with a fucking machine gun or whatever they do. So this was essentially going to be a watershed moment. So the fact that Nike have conceded goes to show that maybe somebody at Nike HQ was like, you know what? As much of a reason we have to sue this guy and we have every reason to do so, it it also isn't a bad it also is a very bad look in terms of optics it makes us look crazy nike already look crazy especially when it comes to retros they already look crazy especially when it comes to this updated shoe that's coming out at the moment this fucking reimagined jordan one they've got coming out that's going to contain a fake receipt from a mom and pop store which is really insulting considering what nike did to the mom and pop industry in general right they essentially decimated it by basically making them or forcing them to buy 500 fucking product styles if they wanted to get one shoe that they really wanted right so essentially they killed independent retail stores from stocking nike products to the point where i don't think even nike even full look i don't know which one big brand doesn't stock me but regardless nike killed the mom and pop stores but now here they come with a jordan one um reimagined which they're going to artificially age and then also include a receipt that makes it look like you bought them from the 1980s like a little yellow sort of receipt with, from transfer paper sort of thing so Obviously, optic-wise and how they perceive themselves is at an all-time low. Um, the quality standards of Nike is on all-time low. How they release really shows, how they release really shows shoes, and how you know the ability to sneak has to get pairs is really, really bad. Um, the sneakers app is an absolute failure. Everything around Nike and you know the backdooring of stuff. You got Marcus Jordan backdooring shoes again. Marcus Jordan thing has he got his fucking account taken away from him? No, of course not. So all these kind of different rules for different people, crazy stuff going on. You got that you know story of that kid essentially using his mum's staff discount and card to buy stock buy Nike stock because she was working there and she got fired like loads of really messed up stuff right perception wise so clearly Nike maybe our understanding of that and wanted to have a little bit of a small win and get back on the good graces of some sneakerheads and maybe this is a great way to go about things but also I feel like it should serve as a wake-up call for people like John Geiger and sneaker customizers of the world, right? Because I always felt like sneakerheads in general are really cringe, right? From There's a guy recently I saw who's basically showing off his um, Virgil Abloh, Louis Vuitton, Nike Air Force Ones, and he had his car wrapped in the same sort of colorway. Absolute cringe. There's nothing worse than sneakerheads that kind of turn furniture into trainers or have boxes of shoes all over the living room and put them into perspex boxes. Like, absolutely rid ridiculous. I hate everything about it. But... There's also an issue when it comes to sneaker customizers because they're not very creative or inventive or interesting in their designs. They just do the same old stuff. They basically retro the same shoes, add Python leather to it in crazy colors or whatnot that no one really wants to buy and they want to charge you five times the value of the shoe or whatnot. Absolutely insane. When I think all their skill and their talent of actually crafting things with their bare hands, being able to scalpel sushis and, you know, um, tear off paint and put angela's paint on the upper and all this really cool stuff they did do and change the midsole or do midsole swap from old vintage shoes all this really cool stuff that people can do you should be you should really be applying that to maybe manufacturing your own shoes especially nowadays considering the access people have to like factories in china factories here in europe i'm sure there are factories out there in the u.s that could be making small runs of shoes and whatnot that's what you should be doing especially given the appetite of people to be sneakerheads right now and to be not and to be kind of seen as the first person to do so and stuff that's what they should be doing but they aren't because they're lazy and because they want to cash in and need to check so maybe this will hopefully wake them up to kind of do the right thing and actually go back to being creative and interesting instead of regurgitating the same old same old but it is good to see regardless i'm happy for john geiger because you know even i'm not a fan of all his work i didn't want to see this guy get completely ruined by this lawsuit and maybe again this would hopefully be a wake-up call for all involved to do more interesting things please por favor